Okay, so hi. I'm drinking some bottled water, which is not something they did at the debate. No one had their water. And I think if they had some water, you know, it refreshes your mind. Like when you play a heavy, intensive chess game, you want to drink some water. You don't want to be drinking pop or wine or beer because that might irritate you a bit and get you out of your comfort out of your focus zone just some plain old water gets you refreshed clears your throat when you gotta speak and you get right back on the saddle and uh, focus on your presentation without that being further ado let the little Canadian tell you how I think it went through. So as you know, this was the only presidential debate that we're going to see between former President Donald Trump of the USA and current Vice President Kamala Harris of the USA. Now, uh, to kick things off, it was a 90-minute debate. Pretty entertaining. Uh, there were ups, there were downs, there were slow parts, there were exciting parts. Overall, I think the moderators did a good job of keeping things flowing. And I like that there was no audience. I also like how in the USA you only have two candidates, so you really get to learn them. Like, I really learned about both of these candidates after an hour. Which is not something that happens in Canada, because in Canada, you have seven candidates, and they all have their own podium, and they get like 30 seconds to speak each, and they start off speaking with the other candidate chirping in his ear, and you, you can't hear a word he said for his entire speech. Then the next candidate speaks, and this candidate chirps in his ear, and even if you could hear, you, you don't learn anything because they only talk for 30 seconds each. So in Canada, our debates are like crap. The, the 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 parties and the candidates they're 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 pretty okay I'd say but the debate's just garbage uh but this was a good debate there was no audience there were the moderators kept it moving they asked relevant questions they gave I like also they they were responsible and mature and allowed the candidates to duke it out. They didn't cut anybody off necessarily. I think only twice they cut off both parties. When they were running out of time at the end. But they let the battle go back and forth. Uh, all the time. Like some, Trump would say something. Then Kamala would reply. Then Trump would respond. Then Kamala would respond. They were just like calling each other liars. And uh, listing historical occurrences and events about each other. So that was cool. Um, how do I think it went? And who is my overall winner? <sighs> you know, one thing that, that separates me from the current candidates is I upload a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So you can tell what I'm doing. Like even when I make a budget. Or when I make a fiscal plan. Or some sort of political policy. I make it in a document. And I upload it to Google Documents. So everybody can see. And know what it is I built. Now I'm not a big fan of logging on to the government's website. And looking at their budget. Because it's fucking 300 pages. And sometimes I have read, like the government of Ontario in Canada, I've read their budget, and it's 300 pages, and I actually do scroll through it, and I learn nothing even after the 300 pages. It's weird. It's, it's, it's put together by, like, people who want to make a pretty presentation rather than actually convey information, and nobody knows what the hell is actually going on. So one thing I wish candidates did is build their own YouTube channel, Make their own documents. Make your own document. Just just try. Don't get your party to make your document for you. Make your own document. Even if it's only one page. This is not school. You don't got to write a 10,000 word essay. Just make a page. Listing your points. Make some cue cards. Make some charts. Make some graphics. Make some tables. 
rough work, rough sketches it out so people know what you're about. It doesn't have to be detailed. One thing they were comp Republicans were complaining about was that Kamala didn't give enough details in her plan. I think she gave excellent details. I think she gave more details than Trump because Trump was all fact, 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 statistic, 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 statistic. But it's not about raw statistics. It's about your character and how you execute your policy. So Kamala Harris did, I think she killed it and stole the show somewhere after about an hour and five minutes, hour and 10 minutes. It was an hour and 40 minutes. So somewhere at about an hour and five minutes, I heard all her policies. Not, not leading up to there, but at that point, she was asked like a question, uh, re respond to Trump about Trump accusing you. And you, the, I think the question was like, you've been in office for three and a half years or you've changed your values. You say that your policies have changed, but your values haven't changed. And then she said, my values as a child, I was, uh, I was growing up as a, middle-class family. My parents were hardworking. They bought their first home when I was a teenager. My friend was sexually assaulted as a teenager. I had to cope with that. I had to help people. Then I became a DA. Then I helped people in the courtroom. And then I became a law student, vice president, whatever. And then she said that was her values. And then she said her policies. And that's where she, she, she went 100 for 100. She stated... She only had like a couple of minutes, but she stated all her policies on foreign policy, immigration, economy, jobs, health care, abortion, uh, mo good morals and, and, and good, good ethical character. How she would bring about uh, uh, like a, a new dynamic, a new... View, view viewpoint and angle into which the approach would be towards politics rather than Donald Trump who's always being negative and pessimistic and just putting people down how she would lift people up and when I heard that the Republicans complained that there's no statistics about her plan but apparently she does have a plan like a 17 page plan on her economy and stuff and uh, $50,000 tax cuts and $6,000 grants to childcare families and this, that, tax breaks. So she has some sort of plan in place. But she didn't say anything about it and she didn't need to. Just like me, I don't talk about my plan. When I make a plan, I put it in a document. And then you can read that document. But when you're speaking at a presidential debate, this is a lesson for all of you kids at home. The next time you go into a presidential debate, keep this in mind. You want to display your ethical character, how you handle yourself, and how you would go about exhibiting your policies. State your policy and how you would incorporate and go about effectively manufacturing that policy into existence to bring about a change. That's what it's about. Trump, at the beginning, I thought... Okay, I'm going to vote for Trump. Because Kamala came out with like this all content of character stuff. And I was like, that's a little cliche. But as the debate went on, I was like, okay, Kamala really knows what she's talking about. And Trump just stayed with fact, 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 fact. And it, the debate went like this. At the beginning, when Trump comes out hammering with facts, it appears so smart. And it is quite smart. It, he, he, knows, he knows his stuff. But... When it's just all these raw facts and statistics, you got to change it up. You got to switch gears a bit. You got to talk about something else. Your content of character, your past contributions, your future outlook. You got to switch it up a bit. And he didn't switch it up. He stayed. He stayed on the same course of just listing these dry facts. So Kamala took over at about an hour into the debate. Up until an hour, Trump was winning. But after an hour, Kamala just skyrocketed. It's like these. Dota video game graphs, Defense of the Ancients. 
the team starts losing gold and experience. But they have late game heroes and late game uh, power. So as the game drags on to an hour, they start losing and dying in the beginning. And then in the end, boom, they get really built up of, of all the things they've done and all the things they've been working towards in the shadows. And they just go God mode and boom, 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 boom. Everything starts falling in their favor. They start breaking all the buildings and all the attacks and they take over. I think that's what happened here, kind of, to an extent. Uh, so, so yeah, Trump was a lot of statistics. Some of them relevant. Some of them, some of them really hit point. But it was just like it, it was not connected. It, he didn't connect. He would make a, a fact, like a statistic, and then he would talk about something complete. He would talk about like immigration. She, the world is getting safer and America is getting more dangerous because we're importing criminals and then he would switch and talk about a Keystone XL pipeline that Joe Biden who isn't even in the debate approved why are you talking about Joe Biden it's true it's a bad policy maybe I don't know much about the Keystone XL pipeline but stay relevant you know stay stay on the you were going with one statistic try and change it up a bit but that's his character Never, people are who they are. Um, so Trump had his points. Kamala really showed her content of character. I still think Mladenkin, you know, the good old classic Abraham Mladenkin would probably be the best choice because he's just got that that third sense. He's got so much youth. He's he's way more younger than any candidate in history. He set the world record for youngest president elected. And he did that in 2020. And he would do it again in 2024. And he's got so much to bring to the table. Uh, but, but it's because he does things behind the scenes. So my word of advice to whoever gets elected. And it'll probably be Kamala. I mean. It'll be close. It'll be close. But based on just this debate, because that's all we got to go off of, if you watch till the end, the whole thing, Kamala's really bringing about that Barack Obama Democratic, yes, we can unify together, we can do it theme. And Trump's more like economy, 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 policy, 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 policy. But it's divisive. It's divisive. And it's like, I'm going to stick my head down and I'm going to just rattle through like a ram. And Kamala is more like we're going to discuss together and uh, hope and resilience and belief. We're going to build up strength. And, and, that, and that's so simple. It's so sim It's such a simple trait to have in a person that goes a long way. I mean, it basically got Barack Obama elected and, and he was he was good. It's so simple. It's a simple fact rather than just barreling down. I like Sometimes I like to barrel. My grandma used to tell me, you're like an ox. Because what an ox does is he digs the dirt and he flips his head back like this and the dirt falls on his back. So my grandma tells me every single year I visit, you're like an ox digging dirt. Because when an ox digs dirt is the saying, he only throws it on himself. And, and that is pretty much me 24-7. But that's how people are. Um, so I liked it. I enjoyed it. I learned quite a, quite a bit about both parties. But you got to watch the whole thing. Watch the whole thing. It was very good. Um, the race of the candidates... Didn't affect either of them. Their genders didn't affect either of them. Their age didn't affect either of them. Their political parties didn't affect either of them. They both came out swinging. Regardless of all these external factors. Just good, hard politics. And presidential debate. So it was right on point. I like this debate. I like this debate. Um, I've watched debates in the past, but this one was was quality. It was quality. 
Now, my word of advice, what would I do if I was in that debate? So one thing Kamala did was she went out and she shook Donald Trump's hand. Trump would never shake Kamala's hand, not in a million years. And she went to his podium and shook his hand. That's something that I appreciate and I would done myself. I would I would go out and shake my opponent's hand. Because in the end, we're fighting for the same thing. We want what's best for our country. If you're a leader and you're a leader, I mean, in, in a lot of countries in the world, you're trying to kill each other. And in some countries, you end up do killing each other behind the scenes. But... That's not right. That's not morally correct. You both want democracy and want peace and prosperity for, for your people, for your country. You're both patriotic and democratic. So that's what I have at my core. So, like, it wouldn't even be a debate with me. All this poking he said, she said... I would take it all if they start poking fun at me. Like you did this on social media. You said this. Uh, something happened to you in your past. We have this on record. Uh, your your stati your scores on this test were this. Your abilities here were this. If, if they took shots at me like that and assassinated my character, which is a true st uh, strategy in politics, I would just take it. And on my end, I would just... Look for similarities between me and my candidate. So, for example, when Kamala or Trump were stating all the their policies and what had happened in the past, if I agreed with that, I would just say I agree. Literally. It's because the, the question went like this. Trump or Kamala, what's your policy on immigration and the border and then they would say something and then they would turn the mic off and give it to the opposing candidate and they would say now you just continue on reply same question whatever you want I would just say if they were right I would say you know I agree with everything you said and I would if I were elected do a lot of those same things but let me add my own little strategy to it and how I would execute those things. So see what I'm saying? That's my advice to the candidates. In Japan, they have a council. And they, they all, even the businesses, the business CEOs meet together and they come up with common goals. How they can strengthen the industry for everybody. And then they go their separate ways. So they come together and build up a policy together. And then they go their separate ways. And that's why they have such powerful industry. For such a small nation. So I would just be like. I agree. With these things you said. I wouldn't even focus on the things I don't agree with. Because why bother? That's just a waste of energy. I'm here to talk about what I bring to the table. What I agree with and how I would execute. And the thing about me is I would just 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 the person I am. What's my what's my qualities I bring? Well, I'm an engineer, I'm analytical, I'm statistical, I'm mathematical. So I like to analyze things and I like to use data. So I would say I agree with, with like for Kamala, there was a couple of points she said. Where I would just say, I agree with everything you said. Nothing to add on. I think it was on that question where it was about her policies and her values. Or or it was about uh, the war with Ukraine. And uh, defending our borders. What happened in Afghanistan and Israel. Tough questions, but they were, they were really well done by the candidates. So I would just say, I agree with everything. But this is how what I would bring to the table and how I would execute them. First of all, this is how we should approach in the new world politics. Democracy amplified. What I mean by that is it can't just be all in the courts and the legislative branch and the political branch and the executive branch and the Oval Office and the White House. 
we got to bring in a lot more voices into our problem solving. We need experts. We need professionals. We need technical specialists. We need economists. We need engineers. We need mathematicians. We need teachers. We need nurses. We need doctors. We need hospitals. We need parents. We need uh, families. We need hardworking, ordinary people. We need business techs and CEOs of business companies and large employers of good quality jobs, highly educated workforces. We bring in all their voices through surveys, through polls, through even if they don't give us a direct answer, which can be hard in some scenarios, we can get indirect data. We can ask them for data or just search for data that can be useful to us. Where's the money? Where's the opportunities? Where's the growth? Where are the holes? Where can we bring these opportunities to more people to get employed, to get better educated? Where can we motivate and inspire the youth? Where can we bring these uh, incredible opportunities into our schools and from a young age get these people inspired about all these wonderful career paths and, and, and which states work really well, which states need improvements, where is crime controlled well, what policies work, what laws work the best, what are the statistics between age groups and demographics and gender and employment career paths and, and all these statistics about just data. That's what I bring. I'm a data person. And you know what? It, it's like this in life. Whether you're an athlete, whether you're a performer, whether you're a scientist, whether you're an actor, a musician, all the work, 99% of the work is done backstage, off the court, behind the scenes. You build up your physical strength. You build up your knowledge. You study. You practice. You train. You learn. You prepare. And then the task is 1% of your life. It's like football players say. When game day comes only once a week, only 18 games a year. We trained all year for this. All my life we trained, I trained for this. Avoiding injury. Getting stronger. And now it's time to have fun. When you play the game, you just have fun. So if you take that approach to politics... And get all the data, get all the expert opinion, get all the voices, get as much democracy as you can, relevant to your country. You don't need to know about Russia and India and Australia and Japan. Everything in the U.S., in the individual states, in the cities, in the districts, you, you get that relevant data of the actual people that live there and who are going to be impacted by these decisions. If you get all that data and all the opinions and all the expert uh, statistics, research studies, suggestions, advice, then not only will you be able to solve your problem with an educated intellectual idea, but you will have so many alternative solutions, which is one of the first things they teach you in engineering, alternative designs. Yes, you have a great idea, but what are alternative designs? And you need, you have an obligation to tell your client, your employer, your contractor, we went with this decision, but you may also want to consider these four or five alternative designs that we have not fully ex exhausted, but that we have considered so if you do all the research behind the stage and as much democracy as possible you will have fucking ideas until you run out until the end of time you will have ideas to improve and solve so many problems so many problems you won't be just like oh man how am i gonna solve crime you will have statistics and you will go okay it's so simple we have this work here these are the statistics for this. Let's connect the dots. 
And then the politician, all he does is connect the dots and sign a bill. And everybody else did the work. All the data, all the research, all the advice, all the knowledge. Einstein said it. All the great inventors said it. Leonardo da Vinci. All the electri electrical engineers. Nikola Tesla. You know, they all believe knowledge is power. And, and knowledge, m m the pool of knowledge, we spend our whole lives in schools from a, from a young age. From five years old, you go into daycare and preschool. And then you go 12 years of schooling. And then you go postgraduate education or an apprenticeship or some sort of certificate, diploma, degree, training. All your life, you're learning. So in politics, we need to bring that up to the highest level of democratic, fun, experimental theory and knowledge. And then we can solve so many problems with so much more data. And make more safe, reliable decisions. Anyway, so that's my advice. That's what I would bring to the table. And, and with just a little bit of a hint of responsibility. I also got my trusty milk here. Always drink your milk. To grow strong. So it was a good debate. I learned stuff. Uh, I would say the, the, the questions both candidates had the most problems answering were about the immigration, like the, the borders being unsecure and illegal aliens that are committing crime in the U.S., both Parties had trouble with that and the foreign wars and stuff like that, like uh, Israel, Ukraine, Afghanistan, and uh, funding all of this, NATO, the European Union, funding that. Both, both parties had troubles with those two issues, but they got some good ideas on health care. Civil rights, abortion, the economy, uh, businesses, energy, climate. Pretty, 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 pretty good on, on all that stuff. So, anyways, that's my review. Share it with a friend. Watch the debate. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. Do good in your community. Inspire others. Go through self-growth. Better yourselves. Better those around you. And as always, stay classy, New York. <laughs>